Dream. What's up, Dream? Welcome to the fam. Glad to have you here. Thanks for following us, man. Uh, let's watch how we can make uh, Star Citizen cooler. And here's a great uh, title here, How Lasers Could Be So Much Cooler. Now, this is something that we talked about here, I think, one of our most popular videos where we watched uh, a hybrid uh, 5 or V audio uh, video where he basically reworked the sounds and uh, I don't know if they're going to show this in this particular video but man what an upgrade and I think that's I think that's going to what's go eventually going to happen you know people want a more immersive experience when it comes to sounds if you're wondering what that is you can go to DG360 type in I, I believe it's a uh, star citizen audio and you can watch that video with us and and the experience was awesome you you heard laser scorch marks on the outside of the hull um, missile explosions were like just like 10,000 times better. The shots from the gimbals were like a bajillion times better from turrets. Everything sounded better. The whole experience sounded 10 times better. Hello, everybody. This is Odd Job Entertainment bringing you another video. And today I want to tell you that lasers are boring. The footage on screen comes from Hybrid V Audio's Tailgunner I'll video. have to blame Pepe that for that. That video too, is very much we'll not work on boring, it, buddy. and you should definitely check it out when we're done here. But the huge amount of laser fire on screen helps me to drive the point, lasers are boring. <laughs> At least boring compared to what they could be. Why am I making this video now? Well, with the impending release of 3.18, CIG has started to talk about weapon diversification. So rather than all laser peters in a given size dealing the same DPS, there will be variation. But I want more variation than what they are implying. In fact, I want a lot more. This is so in I fact want to see some ideas in the hopes of the. This is actually, in fact, the video that we're talking about here that I will link. I'll put a card to this. And like when when I watched this, I was blown away by it. The sound was completely immersive. It was ten times better than the audio, even from uh, uh, Elite Dangerous. And I've always been a fan of the audio from Elite Dangerous. And this was like fantastic. Right, people see this and make it happen. Picture this, if you will. You find yourself in the midst of a massive space battle in Star Citizen. Laser blasts are flying in every direction. There's the Javelin firing off its massive turrets. It's facing off against an Idris with turrets of its own. Fighters are dashing across your field of vision. There's explosions and chaos all around. Now focus on those bright red laser blasts. Try to envision the overwhelming number of them as they fill your vision. Now, take that scene and freeze it in your mind. Follow just one of those laser blasts back to its origin. Can you? What size weapon did it come from? And how do you know? I hope this word picture we've made together illustrates the point I want to make. All the lasers in Star Citizen are the same. Now of course, they differ in damage output and fire rate. But visually, they are all identical red blasts. This can tend to be a bit confusing to interpret, and I even have proof of that. If we look at this promotional image of all these different fighters around this Idris, we can see what I believe to be some mistakes in the trajectory of some of these laser blasts. They seemingly come from the size 5 guns on the Idris turret, but somehow are crossing in front of the much closer Gladius. Now I'm not trying to overly criticize the artist. I made a mistake of my own when I recolored this image which you might find later on. But I point this out because if it was confusing to the artist, is it not just as confusing to players? Now compare this to the Sandstorm in Attack of the Clones. We can't really see any of the individuals firing, but we know what direction the blasts are coming from at a glance. A key element in achieving this is the contrasting color of the red and blue laser blasts. We can see how much a role this plays by getting rid of that color. All of a sudden, it's much more ambiguous and the direction and path of each blast is much more difficult to determine. Is this guy? Wait, wait. Let me understand if I'm un, uh, let me let me understand if I'm understanding this. <laughs> the context here is 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 this guy literally saying that they need to change the color of the lasers? I get he's saying they need to change the size of the lasers, but he's also saying, hey, there should be like some color variation, perhaps, right? Well, here's the thing. Like, you know, I I, I don't know. But I'm like, I don't know what. what. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. He wants physicalized. He wants the lasers to be physicalized. Star Citizen suffers from something similar. While it provides a wholly unique level of immersive ship-to-ship -ship combat, there's three colors that encapsulate all the weapons in Star Citizen, with only very limited exceptions. 
Those colors are light blue for distortion, red for lasers, and a pale yellow for ballistics. The shapes of all these projectiles are very similar as well. Can you I don't tell mind in this them image different if colors this- whatsoever? Like, right? I mean, like, I think there should be variance in the color. I'm just trying to understand what his argument actually is. I mean, like, that I feel like would happen anyway, just based upon the natural development of the game. I think that's going to be something that'll happen. There's, there's, there's a few instances on certain weapons, obviously, uh, when you're dealing with like the kinetic versions and can auto cannons stuff like that, where where you're dealing with actual ammo. You know, uh, but but over the time and the way the game's going to progress and be designed, you're obviously going to see variances in color on lasers and stuff of that nature. I just I'm still trying to wrap my head about around this. This ship is firing ballistics or lasers without any color info. But what I'm proposing would throw a lot more color and shape variety into the mix. All right, I'm waiting. starting with color. Light as we perceive it is a narrow band on the electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah. Lasers can be made to fire in any part of this spectrum, but we are most familiar with those that sit in the visible range. Commonly, we see blue, red, and green. There are, of course, a lot more than just these colors, orange, yellow, purple, cyan, just to name a few. Another characteristic of this visible light spectrum is as we move across from left to right, the energy of thank you billy appreciate that follow man appreciate that i had to pause the video because i'm really i'm really getting into this I'm really getting into this i have to understand what the argument is here yeah i mean like we're, we're three minutes and 55 seconds in and i'm still kind of like huh the light rays is increasing red is the lowest energy and purple or violet is the highest can you see where i'm going with this right Okay. What if these yeah. colors were split across the different weapon classes in Star Citizen? Right. For instance, what if a size 1 repeater or cannon fired red projectiles, but a size 2 fires orange projectiles? Size 3, yellow. Size 4, green. Nah, size 5, cyan. No, 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 size no, no, 6, no. blue. And size 7, wait, purple. Wait, first off, I have to realize if in fact just because of the, the nanometers or, or the change of color going towards violet in itself would make the actual energy uh, much more impactful and have more damage come from it based upon color change, I'm not quite sure that's in fact true. I know that what we see through our by our eyes, the color that we see by our eyes is uh, dictated by the color source, like whatever it is that's shining the light on a surface, right? Uh, it, it, for instance, our sun is like a white yellow or a, or a yellowy kind of with a little bit of orange in it. Uh, but like generally speaking, much more towards the 3200 Kelvin range. So like in, in, in lighting, your colors are dictated by Kelvin, which is the temp, which is a temperature uh, gauge. It's, it's the temperature scientific temperature kelvin okay in the red spectrum of color okay you're at a lower kelvin the kelvin rating on reds are like 2700 ish okay it's warmer okay and then as you move you move up the spectrum of light you go from orange to yellow uh, and then you start then you start getting in the the more ultraviolet colors i don't know if i would separate weapon sizes based upon color because what what we're saying then is is that there's more energy coming from orange there's more energy coming from yellow more energy coming from green until you hit ultraviolet which gives the most energy i'm not sure if the science is is saying that something in the ultraviolet rain range has more of an impact than something in the uh, red range i'm not quite sure Right. So the, because it's going, this is interesting. This is new information for me. When I look at this chart as a lighting dude, I think of Kelvin because I'm thinking about color, right? I'm not quite sure about lasers, right? Um, because I'm not quite sure. Like I would imagine that as you go from 700 to 400 nanometers, that has to do with something about the energy of the laser itself. So maybe he's correct. I'm not sure. I'm not a, uh, uh, that's that's your frequency okay this is interesting this is an interesting conversation well this does a couple things right off the bat if you see some red blasts coming towards you they don't pose as much of a threat as seeing even a single purple blast you would know at a glance more or less how much damage you're about to the take wavelength and whether or not you can survive 
This informs your flight maneuvers to avoid the higher DPS blast because now you can prioritize based on color. At a glance, you know what size weapons your opponent has equipped, See, Seth, and the increase see, that's what, in that's what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to figure out what Sefi's saying. You know, uh, he this is kind of where I'm at, and I don't know because again, I, I'm not an expert on lasers themselves. But Sefi's saying right, but you can give a laser going through a red diode more power, and it won't change the color. You know variety in large battles now makes it more apparent if it's who science, is shooting and I'm from cool where if it's just science, as we saw in cool attack of the clones and let's be honest wouldn't pretty colors influence your shopping as well if you can size up your weapons to shoot like a tie fighter wouldn't you interesting you'd suddenly have a very answer. noticeable way to customize your loadout visually but ah job you say what about those distortion weapons and ballistics how do they fit in well shape is another way to convey information as it stands right now, all of our projectiles have the same basic shape. But what if cannons had a larger, more cannonball-like projectile? Or what if their projectile was more elongated? What if, as you size up in distortion, you have more dramatic particle effects both at the muzzle and in the projectile? Shape gives us another way to visually distinguish them. It should be easy to see then that we can dramatically increase the variety of projectiles on that's, screen that's very and true, at the same that's time true. convey a lot if we more information go super quickly scientific to mode, the player. Right, dude. While we're talking about different kinds of projectiles, let's also talk about another detail in the Clone Wars. We need beam weapons. Now I have it on really good authority that these are coming. It's been data mined in the game files, and there are some no, Red, unused tell me. Refresh, refresh beam memory, weapons bro. I'm, in the I'm game. Sure I heard it. But man, I can't wait. What if the Ares Ion, for instance, shot a beam instead of a cannon? Pinpoint accuracy, but you need to maintain target contact to be effective? Seems like a pretty good weapon against big ships. And it could be okay against small ships in the hands of a competent pilot. What if it dealt progressively more DPS with maintained contact? That could be another way to distinguish the anti-big boy properties of the Ion without making it too overpowered. On the ballistic side, we have the Inferno with its Gatling, but we don't exactly have a laser analog to the ballistic Gatling in the verse. So super fast laser gat? That's another idea. But with all of these, imagine how much more exciting it would look with more colors available. More chaotic, sure, from a surface level anyways. But to the trained eye, it becomes a wealth of information in addition to being a lot of mesmerizing pretty colors. That's one of the primary reasons the Empire in Star Wars shoots green while the Rebels shoot red. It gives a clear visual distinction to determine what's going on at a glance. It's also why the Death Star shoots a beam instead of just a massive laser blast. George Lucas needed a way to... So what he's saying are the Rebels were too broke to get the green lasers. They they had the red weakling lasers. That makes sense. And the Empire had the green lasers. What he's saying here is that the Empire had that kind of cash and the Rebels were just scrambling around and could only afford the red lasers. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hold on. My mind just got blown. My mind just got blown to convey the immense Laser power of this battle station. It needed to be visually distinct. <laughs> of course, after the fact, the visual distinctions were worked into the lore to provide some kind of explanation besides just being pretty contrasting colors. The visible light spectrum-based approach I am suggesting does the same thing. It provides a good reason to make them different and does just so like in us, a way that can actually help rebels. players and enhance gameplay. Man. More information as a player more customization options, and a more in-depth variety of weaponry. That seems like a win, 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 win to me. Of course, that is just my opinion, and I want to know what you think. Do you agree with me or do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Yeah, I was just going to say, Rogue As for one of our Grow the Channel dude. giveaway, I've teamed up with Monster Tech to give away a set of desk or chair mounts. Away, let me tell you what. Monster Tech makes bomb-proof products that, that are well-built and fun that to use. Was the stuff. I've really enjoyed using my custom Andor. chair from them, and, and it has too. been a huge boon to my gaming experience. And if you want to win a set of desk or chair mounts from Monster Tech, Absolutely subscribe and leave a comment with the secret word. 
Each video is another chance for an entry, and a winner will be selected once the channel reaches 1,000 subscribers. Listen, listen I like the conversation. I actually love the conversation. Uh, love the conversation. Uh, this guy's got 433 subscribers. Loved this conversation. Great stuff. Like that was cool. That was actually cool. I dug that. I'm gonna I'm gonna comment. I'm gonna throw you guys the link here who are live. Go over there. Tell them what's up. Um, it's definitely a talk that should be had. I would be in favor for it as long as the science lined up. It seems like it kind of is from what I'm gathering with chat and everything I'm learning here today about lasers. Uh, so this is something that should be talked about. And uh, at first, I thought there was no kind of validity to it. And the more we watched this, the cooler it got. So I, I dig this. I dig this. This guy's got 423 subscribers. Uh, go out, uh, help out Odd Job Entertainment. Uh, definitely a good talk to be having. That's, that's what we used to do here back in the day. That's exactly the kind of talks we used to have. Those were good old days. We'll have them again. We still do. We still talk like that. Don't ever forget me.